Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. So it is a new year, and I think one thing that should be on top of everyone's list is applying for a tax refund, because I think it's safe to say that nobody wants to pay more tax than they need to. But despite this, many people overpay each year by not claiming back what is rightfully theirs. So I'm joined now by Marion Ryan, who is a manager at taxback.com, to talk about some of the tax relief that people can apply for and basically how to put a little bit more money back into their pockets. So thank Thanks for joining us, Marion. Thanks for having me, Tara. So maybe talking about tax relief, the, the thing that seems to be very, very topical at the moment is working from home or the so-called e-work relief. So, so, so what's that and what can people maybe expect or what should people apply for? There is. It, it's hugely topical. There's both of us here in the conversation today. We're both working from home, as is the majority of the population now this week and since last March there. So what it is, when you're working from home, there's two different things that are available to you. First of all, your employer may potentially be able to pay you three euros 20 per day as a tax-free expense for working from home. So that is to cover your additional costs, your utility bills, your heating bills, everything that you've incurred due to the fact that you're working from home. The reality is that a lot of employers aren't in a financial position to do so. So there's a lot of employers that aren't paying that. It's not an, a mandatory payment that employers have to pay. So generally, we're finding that the only employers that are doing that are ones that would have had e-working as a policy prior to COVID. There, anyone like ourselves that had to move last March, there is what's called a tax relief, an e-worker relief that you can claim. So basically, it's a tax relief that you can claim in relation to your additional costs. So as I mentioned, it would be your utility bills, your lighting, your heating, your gas. Another really high fee that people would have is their broadband expenses. So the revenue mm -hmm. are allowing you a deduction in relation to that. So you can claim a tax relief for 30% of your broadband expenses per day that you're working from home and 10% of your heating and electricity bill. So it, it's apportioned to the number of days that you are working from home. So it can be quite a complicated mm -hmm there but it, it's easily worked out by your accountant or if you're doing the tax return there for yourself the main thing you need to get is you need to hold on to receipts through your utility bills and your broadband and you need to get a letter from your employer confirming the total number of days that you're working from home and then once you have that you can work out your deductible percentages and amounts there on it and then you get it at the marginal rate so if you're a 40 percent taxpayer it would have more benefit to you than if you're a 20 percent taxpayer there but you could be looking at maybe between like 60 and 100 euros of a tax refund that you'd be able to claim solely in relation to working from home. It would depend on your amount. That's if someone had an average of about maybe 2,000 euros or to use okay. it. You. And it might seem like a silly question, but does it depend what someone's heating source is? So a question that we've gotten at Bonkers, so i.e. is, you know, well, my, my heating is electric or sometimes it's oil. Um, does that make a difference or is is it, you know, anyone can, can apply no matter what the, the, the fuel type is, I guess? <laughs> No, not at all. And it is something that we, we often get. Now, the easier ones to track is if you have gas heating or if you have, you're getting the oil and you're getting it in twice a year and you get your invoices mm -hmm. for it there. But yeah, basically any heating sources there, the key thing is to retain your evidence of your expense. So have your receipts. And when you're applying, do you need to have that evidence? Do you need to submit it with the claim or do you just keep it or, or what's usually the process there? Similar to all kind of claims in relation to that, like similar medical expenses, you have to retain your receipts. So the revenue have up to six years after a claim is, is made to audit you on it there. So you may be Joe Public that, that gets audited randomly, Murphy's Law might kick in and might be used. So make sure to have everything there to hand. Also as well, there is a facility that like you can either send them to ourselves if you're using someone like taxback.com and we'll retain them on file for you so you can forget about it and never have to worry about it again. And the, the revenue themselves, they have a receipt tracker there where you can upload all your receipts. So it might be as easy for you to click, take a picture, send it to ourselves or send it to the revenue and then you can forget about it. You need never worry about it again because otherwise you're holding it at home. And a lot of people will be in high shares at the moment. So they may not be living with a partner. They may be just, you know, renting a house with someone else. How do they claim? Are they able to get tax relief as well? Absolutely. They can claim that. So it's just their portion, the portion of it. So if there's four people in the house, make sure the utility bills are split four ways there upon it. Or if it's even if it's husband and wife and they're both working from home, they can both claim their e work relief for their portion of it there. But again, the bill would have to be split 50-50. So the name, the the name of the person that's on the, the bill doesn't necessarily have to be the person claim it, but you do have to be resident in the house there. So it, it's it would be you couldn't claim for an address in Carlow if you're living of course. <laughs> in Dublin for the usual bills, but you can claim for the address you're living in. 
So it's for heating, it's for lighting, um, or heating and lighting together and broadband. Are there any other expenses that people can claim for? So if, let's say, somebody had to set up a mini office in their in their home or their apartment, or, or, you know, could they claim for some of those expenses? Not necessarily. So unfortunately, like things like your your screens, your your desk, your, your, your chairs, there's not a tax relief that we as POE workers can claim in relation to it. I know it's self-assessed, can offset their their office expenses from it but I suppose one thing in it is that there's no and it's a question we often get from people about working from home is this going to have any impact on my CGT when it comes to to selling my house as a deal as a home office if you're a PUI worker and you're claiming a work relief it doesn't have any impact on it a lot of employers are allowing employees say uh, an allowance they're giving people an allowance maybe 200 euros to get some office equipment there or, or like ourselves in taxback.com we were basically told well, if it's not stapled down in the in the office, you're allowed to take it home with you. So the yeah. desks are all taken, the screens. But no, unfortunately, there's no tax relief for claiming back. Say, for example, if you use your own laptop, there, there's no, okay. no tax relief in relation to that. And then one final question on this: If your employer has been paying you the um, the three euro, just over the three euro charge or fee each day, can you then also claim further relief on top of that, or is it one or the other? Potentially, if it's a case that your actual daily costs are in excess of the three euros 20 you can claim a tax relief on what's over and above okay. that day. but saying that your, your your actual costs per day would want to be huge for you to actually get that but there is yeah you can claim me work relief and anything over and above the 320 a day as well okay but if, but you're, you're saying it's unlikely that your 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 heating bill would be that large for you to actually get something as us yeah exactly because your heating bills have to be apportioned to the number of working days so it's going to be assumed that you're only working five days yeah. per week and it's working the eight hours per day that's that's why it's reduced down by the 10 percent there but it is definitely worth looking into so even if your employer is paying you 320 today per day if you're talking to ourselves or you're talking to revenue if you're speaking to someone in taxback.com just mention i'm working from home i actually my utility bills are five thousand euros a year is there potential there we can look into it and claim the difference Okay, very good. So another thing that's quite topical at the moment is the, um, I suppose the um, stay and spend scheme that the government has has introduced. What can be claimed there? Because I suppose while we've all been staying at home, not much of us have really been out and about spending. Yeah, yeah, it's just really unfortunate. It was introduced there in October, and that's kind of when this round of lockdowns, slight releases have have kind of kicked in, and so no one's really had a huge amount of freedom. Since mm-hmm. October, but what it is, is since October 1st, between October 1st and April, you can claim back a tax refund on your spending in hotels or in restaurants and, and stuff like that there. And you get a 20% relief on it there. Now it is capped. So the maximum refund you can get per person is 125 euros. Or if you're a married couple and jointly assessed, it's 250 euros. And it is quite good. Now, I suppose we haven't had the chance to go for hotel breaks up in, in Donegal or down to Kerry. But even simple things like if you're ordering a click and collect or you're ordering and collecting a, a meal there if it's over 25 euros you can claim it there so hold on to your receipt on it as i mentioned before you can send it to ourselves and taxback.com or you can upload it onto the receipt tracker there from the revenue and you can claim a refund on that there you get your 20 percent back on it there so okay. it's something small but it can build up and for the space of two months there and maybe a case that might have been your only outlet <laughs> was to get the, the the nice meal delivered to the door or take one get one of the michelin star restaurants to cook along there so you can claim back a refund on that there and one thing to bear in mind is even though it's running from october till april you can claim your expenses from october to december now when you're filing your 2020 return Okay, very good. Now, maybe talking about some of the more traditional tax reliefs that people uh, apply for each year, but I think people probably still forget as well. Um, The the first one maybe being medical expenses. Just remind people what they can apply for. Yeah, it's most commonly known, but I think it's the most underutilised tax relief. So with your medical expenses, you can get a refund of 20% of the cost for any medical expenses or non-routine dental work. So medical expenses, what is this? It's basically anything that's prescribed by a doctor so it's going to be your doctor's visits it's going to be your prescription fees it could be if you unfortunately have to make an A&E visit or you have some orthodontics works that's really expensive I don't think there's a household in the country that doesn't have at least one child that's had to have yeah. re- at some stage along the way and everybody knows it's not a cheap thing there so it's 20 percent of that so any non-routine dental work so your wisdom tubes removing your crowns veneers any medical expenses another one kind of to highlight in that area as well is the likes of 
nursing home expenses and if you're paying for employing a carer for, for mom or dad or something like that you can actually get a tax relief on them at 40 percent so at the marginal rate so they're unique everything else you get tax refund to 20 percent but with the the nursing home fees it's up to 40 percent and those fees can be colossal uh, as everyone mm-hmm. knows there so getting 40 percent back and it can be really helpful to people there so yeah. And if you have an insurer, so if you have private health insurance, and let's say you go to the doctors and it's maybe, maybe you go to the doctors three times a year and they give you back maybe, let's say, one visit for free, so you've ended up spending maybe, let's say, 100 euro, can you still apply for the tax relief on what you didn't get a refund on, if that makes yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the kind of common kind of misconceptions out there is people say, oh, no, I've already got money back from my insurer. I can't get, I can't claim tax. But you can claim back on what's not reimbursed. So say those three visits that cost you 200 euros and the medical insurer refunded you 100 euros, you can claim back your 20% on the 100 okay. euros of difference there. And the ones that are really, really underutilized is the likes of the prescription fees. So someone may have a monthly prescription of 10 euros per month. They never think much of it, it's 10 or they pay it every month. But that over the space of four years, that's 120 euros per year there. And you're getting, you're missing out on 20% of that. So it's like building blocks. We always say that with, with all the different expenses, credits or leases, every little helps there. It all builds it up to kind of increase the refund for people. Very good. Uh, and then maybe the next one that's, that's kind of maybe people don't know about, uh, the home care or credit. Um, um, so, so what is that and how, how does that work? So the home care tax credit is another one that's actually, I think it's going to be coming more kind of topical for 2020 and 2021. So who is entitled to the home care tax credit? It's any couple that are married and jointly assessed and they have a dependent child either under the age of 18 or maybe a case that they're over 18 and they're still in full time education. So they may be in college or they may be doing a PLC course full time there. And it's a tax credit for when one partner is working so the husband maybe the wife is out working full-time and the other partner is at home caring full-time you get a tax credit there it's there and it's quite a valuable it's over 1600 euros per year that they can claim in relation to that it's going to be really common this year could have been a case that last january february both husband and wife were working full-time the kids were in school full-time and flipped things around this year now one partner may be still working full-time working now, they might be in the back office mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're working from home. The other may have unfortunately lost their job and they may be on the, the PUP now and the kids are at home there with them. They, that family may be entitled to the home care tax credit if the, the spouse's income has dropped. And when you say a, a dependent child, you just mean it, it, their child. Maybe yeah. some people might interpret that as maybe a child that has special needs or a child that maybe needs very, very specific care. But if you're just, I suppose, a family and you have you have two kids and one of them, maybe the mum or the dad, is staying at home to look after these kids, the tax credit, would, would they could apply for the tax credit. Is that exactly. Correct? Sometimes yeah. I get too tax technical with my terminology. No, yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> dependent child is any child under the eighteen yeah. under the age of eighteen. They're financially dependent on you. They're they're draining your finances yeah. Yeah. for you there. Yeah. <laughs> well, what child doesn't? <laughs> yeah. um, so it's one thousand six hundred euro. And can you claim back again, just remind us, in, in arrears? So if somebody is maybe only find out finding out now about this home carers tax credit, can they apply for maybe um years that they forgot to to, to, yeah, to do this? The beauty of it is that everyone can go back four years to claim back any tax credits or expenses or reliefs that they're entitled to. So currently the years 2017, 18, 19 and 20 are open for review. So say, for example, that couple that I mentioned there that both were working last January and February, last January and February, they weren't entitled to the home care tax credit because they were both working. But their circumstances changed throughout the years and one of them lost their job and is still at home. They may technically be entitled to it for 2020. So you can go back and claim that retrospectively and get a refund for it and it means that will be added onto your tax credits going forward so which means in 2021 you'll be paying a little bit less tax every week along the way rather than getting a refund at the end of it okay very good and then another one that comes up the, the, the beautifully named flat rate expense allowances because it's kind of been in the news recently because i think revenue was thinking of maybe getting rid of them but maybe just remind people or even educate people who might be aware what, what actually are they and you know what type of relief or money could people get yeah, they've been te- they've been toying with removing them there actually for the last few years. The revenue, I think, with everything that happened in the last twelve months, they just decided right, will you leave things be as they are? So the flat rate expense is actually a really valuable thing and something to look into there. So what it is is it's a tax credit that people are entitled to solely based on their occupation. Now it goes back to maybe 30, 40 years ago when there was really strong unions that negotiated this for their for their members there. So it's it's going to be the commonly known one. It's going to be like teachers 
doctors, engineers, shop assistants, but they're really valuable. And like with everything else, they can be claimed retrospectively. So say, for example, if you're working as a shop assistant in retail, so if you're working in Dunn's, you're working in Lidl, you're working in Aldi, there's 121 euros per year of a tax credit there that you're entitled to in relation to that there. If you're a doctor, it's going to be higher there. It's going to be about 695 euros. And if you're a really talented musician and you're in the National Symphony Orchestra, there's over 2,600 euros per year there that you can get to buy the strings for your heart. <laughs> but they're really valuable. And as I said, it's based solely on your occupation. So say, for example, if you're a bricklayer, there's a tax relief that you're entitled to there in relation to your workwear, your uniforms, your, your steel toe cap boots, but you don't need to send us receipts in relation yes. to, to all your expenses there. It's based on your job title there and it's something that's really easy to be claimed and can be claimed back the four years like everything else. And does it depend um does it depend at all on your wage or is it just as the name would suggest it's a flat rate expense that applies the same regardless? Exactly. It's based on your your occupation. So say for we'll take the shop assistant in retail. You may be starting out, it might be your first job and your entry level shop assistant in retail there and you're on the minimum wage you're entitled to the 121 euros a year, whereas maybe someone there that's working 30, 40 years in the in the same role there, their, their salary may have increased there, but they're entitled to the same amount. Now, it would, the, val, the actual monetary value of yourself would depend on your, your tax rate. So if you're on the lower tax rate, it's 20% of that would be the monetary value of yourself. And if you're on the higher tax rate, then it would be the, the 40% there. But it's a good number to have in mind is the 121 euros for that. And if you are in the orchestra, I'm sure someone had mentioned to you that you've got this substantial credit you can claim. Very good. And um, also talk maybe about tuition fees. That's another relief that people can can claim. Probably like medical expenses, it's one that people are a bit more up to speed on. But just what's available and what can people claim? Yeah, it is. It's one that can be very valuable if you are entitled to it. But it's one that it's tricky to be entitled to it for. So first thing I suppose to bear in mind is you're entitled to twenty percent back of the costs but there is a minimum threshold. So if it's a full-time course, it's 3,300 euros is not claimable. So the first 3,300 that you pay, you can't claim any tax relief on it. If it's a part-time course, then it's half that. It's about 1,600 euros. And it, it's quite clever where they set it because just right, just above the threshold there, what the normal fees would be for, for college courses there. So nine times out of 10, you're not going to be entitled to refund right. this shit. However, there are a few exceptions. So I suppose the first thing to bear in mind is if there's two children in a household, in college at the same time, your costs, your fees are going to be up near the 7,000 euros mark. You're going to be entitled to a refund in relation to that. The second spouse is going to be if you have to repeat a year. So unfortunately, you failed your exams and you have to repeat a year. Again, you're going to be hit with, with huge fees for that year there. So it's going to be a refund there. And the most common is if you are going on to higher education, even for yourself. So if you're doing a master's, if you're doing a grad, they're all going to be eight, nine, possibly 10,000 euros and they're going to be due a refund in relation to that there as well. So there is an extensive list on the Revenues website of the courses that are covered and, and everything like that. You don't even necessarily specifically need to go through that yourself. The very thing to bear in mind is if you're do, doing a college course, send us the receipt, we'll have a look at it and we'll be able to make sure that you can claim everything on it. And a lot of fees as well can sometimes be uh, things like you know, the student levy or a sports centre fee and things like that can often be charged. Do they get included when you're looking for tax relief or are they excluded as well? Yes, yeah, so they exclude things like uh, examination fees and they exclude things like registration fees. So that's why the key thing is not to get bogged down with it. Send us over the receipts. The guys here in the back office, they will know straight away. They'll look through it. They'll take out whatever amount is disregardable on it there and they'll include it in on it. The same as well with if you are applying directly with the revenue there. If you send them in the receipt, they'll analyse it and they'll include what it is to include it. We don't, I don't like to have the revenue be put met out as the bad guy. They're not. The revenue are there to make sure that everyone pays the correct tax. And if you've paid too much, they'll refund it to you. If you haven't paid enough, they'll, they'll let you know that as well there. <laughs> I suppose the thing is the revenue's job isn't to chase people down and make sure that they're aware of all the different credits and expenses. Yes. That's what that's what we went to Just on do. that, if the worst was to happen and somebody was found to have underpaid tax, depending on the amount, how do they pay it back? What would happen? Do you come to a deal with revenue or would they take it all out of next week's paycheck or how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't get hit for it next week, Henry. It is kind of something that actually is kind of topical this year as well, because the if anyone has received any of the COVID payments, so the pandemic unemployment payment, it's known as PUP or the, the wage subsidy, it's TWIS as, as they commonly know it there, they may potentially actually have underpayments this year because those are taxable incomes. 
but it wasn't adopted as source. Now, I suppose to put people's minds at ease in relation to that, they're not going to get a big bill tomorrow from the revenue saying you owe this. Now, they may get a notification on their online portal saying that there is a slight underpayment there. The revenue have confirmed that they'll reduce, they'll claw that back in the way of reducing your tax credits and they're not going to start that until 2022. So which means they'll spread it out over a couple of years. It may be a case that you pay a euro or two more tax per week. So they're trying to reduce the, the, the impact on it there for people. So you're not going to get a scary letter from the revenue saying you owe us money and we want it now there okay. and because everything that we've discussed prior to this is kind of going to help that so if you have an underpayment and you've never reviewed your taxes before there could be a huge amount of expenses and credits that you're not utilizing there so you might be able to get rid of that altogether and get to a refund position okay and when people then if people are listening to this video or they're watching this video and they're looking to, to, to reply it is now the best time to reply or is there a particular time during the year and um, you know no, is it usually january or february a good time Always the best time, sooner rather than later, so I'd say. So there's not, it's not like being self-assessed that there's a deadline that you have to file your tax return by this certain date. January, of course, is going to be the best time for people to claim. We're going to need it more than ever after all our Christmas spending there. With PAYE employees like ourselves, we have up to four years after the tax year ends to claim back our refunds. So you can do it at any time throughout the year, but we'd always say the early bird catches the worm. So get your Absolutely. refund, get your application and get everything claimed back and have it in your bank account sooner rather than later than leaving it unclaimed. And, and just a final question, can you, I suppose you have to usually wait though, do you, until the year has finished? So let's say it's now 2021 and you're paying for a course, uh, maybe a, maybe you're paying for tuition fees um, that's starting in a few weeks time, or maybe you have a medical uh, treatment that's taking place in a, in, a, in a few weeks. It's next year, is it, that you would then apply for the tax relief? It's not now, even though you're maybe incurring the cost at the moment exactly so the refunds can be claimed retrospectively so once the tax year is finished so on 31st of december last they closed off all refund applications for 2016 so you can no, take no more action 2016 but on that same day they opened up 2020 for us so if you're going to the doctor this week and you have a load of expenses hold on to your receipts or send them to us here in taxback.com or upload them onto the revenue receipt tracker there and then you can claim the the benefit of them then next january and when people, just a final question, Marion, when people maybe do come to you or they go to revenue, um, what do what do people usually end up getting back? I mean, do people often get a sizable sum? Is, 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 is it worth kind of, you know, the hassle maybe that people think? Um, oh, what are the figures? Yeah, it's definitely worth it. So like 99 times out of 100, you're going to be due some sort of a, of a refund there. It's rarely that there's been a mistake made that people would have underpayments there. The average refund we find for people here on taxback.com over the space of the four years is about 1,076 euros. Okay. So it, it, it's a sizable enough amount there for people. So if people are being, being clever. It's this time of year that everyone kind of gets find their financial head on. I find they're changing their electricity suppliers. They're doing things like that. So just add in your tax refund into the mix there. So just get you through the pain of, of January and February having that nice refund there as well for you. Okay, Mary, I think then we've caught up on everything. Thanks a million for joining us. Thanks, and I will talk to you again soon. Lovely, thanks. Bye-bye.